One minute ago, the floor of the Philippine Trench ripped open, 900 kilometers long, 12 meters high. In that instant, the ocean itself became a wall, surging towards seven nations without mercy. Over one million lives now hang in the balance. What if this was not a warning, but a preview? The answer begins where the pressure never truly stops. Beneath the calm surface of the Philippine Sea, the trench stretches for nearly 1,000 kilometers, silent but restless. Along its length, the Earth's plates are locked together, refusing to slip. Each year, they strain against each other with a force measured not in decades, but in millimeters. 30 to 48 millimeters of stored motion among the fastest rates on the planet. In the north, near Taiwan and Luzon, GPS surveys confirm the crust is wound tight, accumulating pressure with every passing month. The central segments west of Luzon add another 24 to 36 millimeters per year, while the southern reaches off Mindoro and Palawan gather strain at up to 28 millimeters annually. The numbers are small, but relentless. A hidden wall of energy, invisible above water, building toward a single breaking point. Yet this growing hazard remains obscured. The network meant to watch over these depths is fractured. For over three years, the nearest deep ocean tsunami sensors, DART buoys 52405 and 52406, have been dark, leaving a detection blind spot more than 400 kilometers wide. No real-time confirmation can come from this stretch of ocean. Instead, the pressure mounts in silence, unrecorded by the sensors designed to warn the world. When the trench finally gives way, the first sign may not be a signal, but the surge itself. At 10.47 a.m., the locked plates beneath the Philippine Trench finally break. A rupture slices through 900 kilometers of fault, longer than the distance from Manila to Hong Kong. The seafloor lurches upward, lifting a slab of ocean floor 12 meters high in seconds. This is not a slip or a stagger, but a hinge. The entire seafloor bends, pushing the water above into a steep vertical wall. The numbers are almost beyond belief. Magnitude 9.3, a seismic moment that rivals the largest events ever recorded. In the language of modelers, this is a full-length, finite fault rupture, 900 kilometers long, 120 kilometers wide, with average slip near 20 meters and peak displacement at the shallowest edge. The uplift is sharpest where the trench is closest to land, focusing energy straight at the coast. Hydrodynamic models, tuned for rapid vertical motion, warn that this geometry creates a wave unlike anything in living memory. The initial crest forms within moments, its height and speed driven by the abruptness of the uplift and the sheer scale of the moving fault. There is no time for warning buoys or distant sensors to catch the signal. The ocean surface, forced upward along the rupture line, becomes a wall. Its front steep, its energy concentrated, its arrival measured not in hours, but in minutes. Every downstream calculation, every alert and forecast, now traces back to these parameters. Magnitude 9.3, 900 kilometers ruptured. 12 meters of vertical seafloor rise. The crisis has a shape, a size, and a clock that has already started. Within seconds of the rupture, seismic stations across Luzon and Mindanao record a violent, unmistakable spike. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, FIVLX AXES, receives the first raw seismograms at 10.47 and 21 seconds in the morning. In the control room, analysts track the waveform, a sharp onset followed by a sustained high amplitude shaking that persists for nearly three minutes. Automated algorithms flag the event as off scale. Magnitude readings climb past 8.5, then 9.0. At the United States Geological Survey in Colorado, the global network converges. Moment tensor solutions calculated from dozens of stations confirm the rupture's geometry a thrust event dipping west with a fault plane nearly 900 kilometers long and an average slip of 20 meters. The numbers match the worst case parameters. Meanwhile, tide gauges along the Luzon coast register a sudden vertical jump. In Apari, the sea level rises by over two meters in less than 60 seconds, far faster than any tide or storm surge. 
The data is transmitted in real time to FIVAL AACS and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. There is no artifact, no instrument drift. The spike aligns perfectly with the predicted arrival time from the seismic model. Within four minutes, FIVO LCS issues a bulletin stating that a magnitude 9.3 earthquake has occurred on the Philippine Trench. Instrument cross-checks confirm a vertical displacement event. Immediate evacuation is advised. The United States Geological Survey and the Japan Meteorological Agency independently verify the event, their bulletins echoing the same figures. The chain of data, from seismogram to moment tensor to tide gauge, removes all doubt. The ocean floor has moved. The crisis is real. Sumatra, 2004. Japan, 2011. Both disasters began with a violent slip. Tectonic plates grinding past each other, releasing energy sideways along the fault. The tsunami waves that followed traveled fast, but they spread out, their leading edge broad and low. In Sumatra, the ocean floor shifted mostly horizontally, giving coastal communities up to 20 minutes, sometimes more, before the first wave struck. Japan's Tohoku quake sent a long, rolling surge toward shore, devastating but not entirely without warning. The mechanism beneath the Philippine Trench today is different. Instead of a sideways lurch, the sea floor rises in one sudden vertical motion. Modelers call this a hinge uplift. Professor Fumihiko Imamura of Tohoku University describes it as lifting a door on its edge. The water above is thrown upward, not swept aside. The result is a wave that is steeper, taller, and far faster than those generated by lateral slip. Hydrodynamic simulations show that a vertical displacement of 12 meters can produce a tsunami wall with a face so abrupt it arrives at the coast before distant sensors can register its true height. Professor Kenji Sadake, a leading tsunami scientist, explains that with vertical ruptures, the warning time shrinks to just minutes for the nearest shores. The crest forms directly above the rupture and races outward, its energy concentrated in a narrow front. Unlike the low rolling surges of past events, this wave stands almost upright, its force focused and immediate. Existing warning systems, designed for the slower build of lateral quakes, struggle to keep pace. The physics of hinge uplift means that by the time alerts are issued, the water may already be at the door. The science is clear. Vertical motion creates a different threat. The speed, the steepness, the lack of warning. These are the hallmarks of a tsunami born not from a slip, but from a sudden, catastrophic rise. Within minutes of the rupture, the true scale of exposure comes into focus. Along the low-lying districts of Manila and the crowded suburbs of Navotas and Malabon, 1.2 million people find themselves inside the projected inundation zone. The numbers are not abstract. Each block, each street, mapped against flood models that show water reaching up to 8.5 kilometers inland. At the heart of this zone stands Manila's main port, a lifeline for the country's economy and emergency response. The port's aging key walls, built for storms and tides, not for vertical tsunami impact, are now the first line of defense against a wall of water moving at highway speed. Port engineer Jusuf Atmaja has warned for years that these structures cannot withstand a sudden surge above 8 meters. His reports, often overlooked, detail the risk of total key collapse, container avalanches, and the paralysis of rescue logistics. Across seven nations, similar warnings flash through emergency channels. Each coastline, each port faces its own reckoning with a force that cannot be stopped or delayed. Conflicting warnings ripple across the Pacific. At the Japan Meteorological Agency, forecasters review their segmented rupture model, bathymetry smoothed, energy divided across fault lines. Their official advisory holds at three meters, a figure anchored in decades of historical wave records. At the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration analysts run a different simulation. Their inputs weigh the full 12-meter vertical uplift, direct and impulsive. The result is a projected wave crest up to 10 meters, with the first surge reaching Manila Bay in under 15 minutes. 
internal messages fly between agencies. The Japan Meteorological Agency lead forecaster insists our segmented model fits the basin's shape. Three meters is the advisory. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration team replies, the vertical wall is real. 10 meters is possible. We must prepare for the worst. Each side defends its grid, its assumptions, its urgency. Emergency managers in seven countries wait for one number. The difference is not academic. A three meter warning means shelter in place. 10 meters means total evacuation. The clock runs down as the world watches, caught between models, with the truth still racing across the sea. Right now, over 125 million people live within reach of the Philippine and Manila Trench fault lines. With key tsunami sensors still missing in the Western Pacific, every minute of warning counts. The ocean remembers the pressure we ignore. One day, it may not wait for us to act.